I think the peak, it's always difficult to pick the peak, but the peak, when you look at the aggregated figures, looks as if it was last weekend, not this weekend gone by, but the weekend before. And it seems to be coming off. And as you said in your intro, uh, New South Wales has a disproportionate number of cases compared to other states and territories. So it's probably a 50%, 50 greater proportion of cases to population than other, uh, in other states and territories. If you look at the total number of cases, as a percentage of population. The ACT in Tasmania are number one and two with New South Wales number three at mm. about 40%. And the, um, so good news that it's tailing off. Um, the immunisation rates are still low, so 70% overall in terms of third dose um, there, which is getting their third dose who are eligible for the third dose. That means that 5 million Australians are eligible for their third dose and haven't had it. That's a lot of people, much less going through to the fourth dose. And the figures for the fourth dose vary between 30 and 40% of those eligible getting that. So we're underpowered in terms of vaccination, which means people are underprotected. Um, they are, and they're underprotected against getting sick. Hmm. And there's a new variant that's uh, on the horizon, or is it a sub-variant? It's a sub-variant. It's part of the Omicron family, 2.75. Some people have called it Centaurus. Again, it's fairly early days to really know what's going on here, largely in India, but it's, and it may well actually be tailing off in India, and it's spread to various countries around the world, including Australia. It's a bit more, in, it is more infectious than BA1 and 2, maybe a bit more than BA5. It doesn't seem to be more virulent, in other words, more dangerous. Um, but because of the complex mutations, it may be more susceptible to some of the uh, antibody drugs that are used to treat uh, COVID-19 disease. So whether, I, I'm not sure that you would stay up at night worrying about 2.75 at this stage. Okay, on to monkeypox then. Uh, there's a new vaccine available here from today. Who should be getting that? Um, the government's uh, expert advice is that given that at the moment it's in the community of men who have sex with men, it's people who have come in contact with uh, monkeypox. So you can ring vaccinate in the incubation period and actually prevent it moving on. Uh, high risk groups such as sex workers, people who are going overseas and maybe in a high risk situation. Um, and I think maybe health workers who are in a high risk situation mm. too may be eligible too. But we don't have enough to really do the job properly at this point. I think to really get the initial stage under control, the modelling says you've got to have 75,000 doses out there, maybe 250,000 doses to really do the job properly. And there's a real problem with scale up of this third generation vaccine around the world. They weren't expecting, it's a smallpox vaccine. Smallpox vaccines have been held in store because people have been worried about biowarfare mm. rather than something like what monkeypox. And um, so scale up is a real issue in the two main manufacturers. But eventually, is this a vaccine that we all should have at some point? Maybe, unless... Uh, it really depends on how it spreads through the, through the community. Um, it may well be that we get it under control without needing to immunise far beyond that. It's a safe vaccine, mm. much safer than the second-generation vaccine, so that's good news. But whether or not everybody should have it, that, that'll be a matter of to see mm. how it spreads within Australia. On to another vaccine now, this time uh, against shingles. On the programme uh, later today, you're looking at whether the vaccine that's being offered to the over 70s is the best one that's out there. So this is a free vaccine to the over 70s and the vaccine that's currently been offered is, uh, is one where probably there's only about 40% efficacy against getting infected or getting, or not fe getting infected, but getting shingles, which is a reactivation of chickenpox. There is another one which is about 90% effective and seems to last much longer. It's very expensive. It's about $300 for the two doses. And, um, a and the question for the government is, is it cost effective? And, that's, and the drug company says yes, and the government says we need more data. So there's a bit of argy-bargy going on there. So I'm not saying this for people to stop getting immunised with the current vaccine, but it's whether or not we're getting the best one is the real question.